Hello, my dear sewing friends. It's Alisa here. I'm so happy to see your beautiful faces. And with that, welcome to Sew Easy Season 2 and Episode 2. Now, in the first episode of this season, what did we make? We made a cardigan, right? And I'm actually really happy to report that I've been wearing it quite a bit. So I'm really happy with how that turned out. And today, I'm on the mission to create sort of another wardrobe staple for winter. I don't know exactly how to call it. In my mind, it's sort of like a, a vest or like a half sweater, even maybe like a really, really toned down poncho, but definitely a garment that you can wear on top of like a button up shirt or a blouse and that garment underneath would peek out, which would create a really fun layering accent. So I don't know how to call it, but I do have a sketch for you. As you can see from the sketch, the garment itself is really easy and really straightforward. Uh, basically we have three pattern pieces, right? We have the front, the back, and the neckline and that's about it. So if you want to create something very similar, I'm sure that you will have no trouble whatsoever. And I know that sometimes when we talk about simple or really straightforward garments, we tend to think about them as boring, but I always urge you to look beyond the line drawings and look beyond the pattern and see the possibilities. So at the very end of this video, I'm going to style this in a couple of different ways, the way that I see wearing it, and hopefully that will inspire you. But right now, let's get to it. Now the plan is actually basic and for my first step I'm going to start with a rectangle and then adjust it on my body for the final shape. To get the measurements for the rectangles, I see two very simple ways how we can go about it. Now first, since this is a drop shoulder garment, imagine that there are two arms over here. <laughs> we can take our measuring tape and we can measure from one drop shoulder to the other drop shoulder and take that as the approximate measurement of the top side of the rectangle and then find your high point shoulder and measure all the way down to however long you want your garment to be. In this case, you will need to make sure that the width of the rectangle has enough ease to go over your bust, your waist, and to go over on top of another garment, depending on the fabric that you're using, meaning stretch or no stretch. Now, in my case, this is going to be a very, very relaxed fit garment, so there should be quite a bit of ease to create that volume that I'm looking for, but you might go for a more form-fitting version, so it really depends on you. Just keep these things in mind. Option number two, would be to take your largest circumference, so bust, waist, or hips if you want your garment to go past your hips. So let's say in this case we have bust as the largest circumference and that is 35. We will need to divide that by two because we have one front pattern piece and one back pattern piece, so 17 and a half in this case. And then we need to add a ton of ease to it. So let's say I want to add 10 inches, so 17 and a half plus 10 inches would be 27 and a half and then we can sort of drape it over our shoulders and see if that drop shoulder is something that we're going for or perhaps we need to increase a little bit more. Needless to say that we will need to add seam allowances and hem allowances to these measurements. For example, this double-sided faux Sherpa that I'm using for this project takes an inch in order to do just a simple double fold hem, which I'm going to do by hand by the way because I do feel that it gives a cleaner, neater result. And speaking of fabric, I'm going for a volume, fuzz, fluff. So as I mentioned, I'm using this double-sided Sherpa, thick textile, definitely creates that volume. If you want the same, you can go for a really chunky knit, maybe some faux fur. If you want less volume, you can go for French terry or jersey or even double, double brush polyester, perhaps some wool, fleece, so many different textiles that you can opt for just definitely think of how you're going to wear this. For my own measurements, I simply folded the entire fabric that I had in half and it gave me 28 and a half inches and I think I can work with that. So we're just going to cut one side as 28 and a half inches and the other side is going to be about 22 inches or so. And I also folded my fabric so that way the selvage ends are on the bottom because I want to use that instead of a hem. And I quite like that, they're not going to unravel so that's what I'm doing here. Now I just gotta cut this out and once done, I'm going to adjust it on my body. Now that I have cut my 
my rectangles, I'm going to fold them in half and I'm going to mark the center front and center back. And I'm going to use those markings as sort of like a guideline for me to cut two very shallow necklines. Shallow is the key word because we can always make them deeper, but for right now, I just need to know where those necklines are at as we're going to base this together. So I think I'm going to cut my back neckline one inch deep and the front neckline two inches deep, and that should do it. For the width of the neckline, you can just use a very basic t-shirt that you already have and copy the measurements from there. Just don't forget to add your seam allowances. Now I'm going to place the front and the back right sides together and baste the shoulder seams and the side seams. And after that, I will try it on and make the final adjustments right on my body. And one of the reasons why I wanna go this route today is because this is such a simple project. So I feel that whatever I'm trying to say by doing this example is not going to be lost in the process. And what I'm trying to say is that a lot of times we feel that there's some sort of pattern drafting police or sewing police, but in reality, there are many ways how to draft patterns. There are many ways how to sew. There are many schools of thoughts and approaches and you, are the boss because you are the one who is creating the pattern, the clothes, your visions that come to mind and come to life. And I feel that once you realize the power that you hold as the person who is expressing their creativity and is the one sewing and creating, once you realize that power, you can do anything and anyhow as long as the final result fits well and you're happy with your creation. Now let's turn it out and see see what we've got and man <laughs> the fuss from the fabric is absolutely everywhere and as expected I definitely want to adjust the shoulder slope so I'm going to measure and pin while the garment is still on me. So the first adjustment that I'm going to do is the shoulder slope and I have determined that I need to lower it by about four and a half inches so basically like this instead of that and we knew that that's going to happen so this is going to be the first step need to cut away this part don't forget about the seam allowances and then base it back together and repeat it on the other side now while I'm at it I also need to deepen this opening a little bit just by about an inch or so and I need to sort out this angle so that way when I wear it the sleeve hangs right so I need to make it almost a 90 degree angle right over here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut 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 and from here I'm going to take it straight all the way down to the hem and I know that my garment right now has plenty of ease so cutting away this much on both sides of the garment is going to be just fine. All right, now that that is done, it's time to baste it and try it on one more time before the final stage. Right, not too bad, so we are almost there. Now I will do two final adjustments. First, I'm going to create a slightly more pronounced sleeve so that way I can fold the hem without a problem. And second, I'm going to deepen the front neckline. And after this, we are ready to sew. First will be the shoulder seams. And here, I actually have decided that I want to serge the sleeve hem as well. So that way I can actually do a single fold hem instead of the double fold that I initially thought I would do and avoid it being super thick. I also did the same on the neckline and for the next step I placed and sewed the side seams right sides together. Now from here I just have to simply finish sleeve and neckline openings by hand and I know that a lot of people really dislike hand sewing but fluffy fabric like this is your best friend at it as it hides the stitches so so well. Now under the supervision of Kitty Eva I folded all of the hems once to the wrong side, threaded hand sewing needle, and got to work. By now, you're probably wondering, wait a second, how about the original neckline? Well, it turns out I actually had enough fabric left and I decided to do a scarf neckline. So that way I can wear it together or separately, sort of like a two in one. 
As you have guessed, it is also just a rectangle big enough to go over your head in a circle. And sewing steps are exactly the same as if you would sew a scrunchie, minus the elastic of course. So first, I placed the long sides, right sides together and sewed those leaving about 2-3 to three inches open on both sides. Now once done, I am going to tube it through so that way I can sew the short ends. That will leave us with a little opening to turn the scarf right side out. And as you have gathered, I will close up the opening with hand sewing stitches. Now let's take a look at the final result. The very first project that I made from this cut of fabric was actually this super cute little hat from my daughter that has little mittens attached to the scarf portion. So if you are a member of this channel, first of all, thank you so so much for your support and do check out your members perks because you do have a full members extra video about how I created this project. Well there you have it my dear sewing friends, you can wear it without it, you can wear it with it and with that you get a two in one garment that you can really put to work in so many different ways. I truly hope that you did enjoy this video and if you want to see the other episodes in So Easy series then click right over here. I hope to see you in the next video as well and until next time, happy thoughtful sewing. Bye!